Welcome back to Chamber Talk. I'm your host, Shana Smith, Vice President of Business at the Chamber of Commerce and Hotel Association. With me for this segment, I have Ms. Janet Oliver. She is the Executive Director of the Charter Yacht Society here in the Virgin Islands. Welcome, Janet. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Okay, so you are one of the representative groups of one of our um, larger sectors, I would say, in our economy, which is the marine industry. That's correct. And there's been a lot of um, interesting changes recently, whether it's in legislation or other uh, challenges or issues that have um, been going on for over a year now, or maybe longer. So let's talk a little bit about that. But first, let's give the backstory to the marine industry. We were just talking about the level of contribution in our economy. Um, CSO recently released some statistics that said that $250 million um, is uh, input into the economy here in the BVI from the yachting sector. Mm -hmm. And um, we know that 62% of our guests come to go on a boat. Okay, so, so basically so it's a, large it's a major player mm -hmm. in terms of the industries. It so is. when we talk about the marine industry, what are the types of services that we're talking about? Um, well, the, the yachting sector at large is about I would say close to 900 to 1,000 yachts. Mm -hmm. um, you, have, you have private yachts that are just kept in marinas and managed by management companies and then the clients come down and they jump on the boat and they sail around and come back, sort of park it, mm -hmm. leave the territory. Okay. Um, we have day sail uh, yachts. And um, then the largest uh, sector is the bareboat sector. Mm -hmm. And um, I call that the um, do-it-yourself vacation. Mm -hmm. Most of our bareboat visitors who um, are qualified to sail the boat themselves okay and so they come down with quali with some qualifications and experience in sailing mm -hmm. and um, and it's like renting a car they rent they charter the boat and they sail around the islands they might take a captain or a chef on board but it's not required of them necessarily mm -hmm. and um, and then you have the crude yacht sector which is um, we call them the creme de la creme, like, like a limousine. Mm -hmm. it's, um, you have hosts on board, they cook for you, they entertain you, they mm -hmm. take you around the islands. And, and, um, and, and that's, that's a smaller segment, but um, in, terms of, um, it, you know, in terms of what it costs, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's more. Okay, so, so that would be the luxury end of the... Luxury end, okay. yes, yes. And there are about 150 crude yachts. Okay. That's quite, quite also a significant number. Significant out number. Out of the 900. Most of, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes. Okay. All right. So in terms of regards then um, the marine industry, so these are businesses basically that are based here in the Virgin Islands um, in terms of, you know, license to trade. Yes, so the bare boat industry is, is uh, um, I would say there are probably about 12 to 15 bare boat companies in the BVI, mm -hmm. and uh, they might have um, 10 boats, they might have 30 boats, they might have hundreds of boats like mm -hmm. the moorings. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to the crude yachts, they are generally a company unto themselves. They are, they are the charter company. Okay. Um, so they would you know, they would have a trade license or they would be, again, working underneath, like the Moorings has a crude yacht division, they would be working underneath the, the Moorings license. That's part but of it. Mm -hmm. in, in other respects, they pay, you know, they're paying like every other business. If they have employees, they're paying Social Security, they're paying NHI, mm -hmm. um, they have work permits. So okay. in other, other, every other aspect, they okay. are. Mm -hmm. It's a business. It yeah. is a business. Okay. So recently we've heard about some changes in legislation. Um, specifically the cruising permit. So we'll start with that one. That's correct. What type of impact, well first of all let's talk about what the change is and then what is the impact having on the industry? Well there are a couple of changes which are uh, proposed. Um, the cruising permit ordinance does go back to 1976 mm -hmm. um, so it's not a surprise that they ha are reviewing it right now. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the first, um, first proposal has been the uh, fee schedule mm -hmm. which has changed and um, so the fees for local-based vessels has gone up about 300%. Okay. Um, they were 1976 prices, mm -hmm. so again, it isn't really a big surprise. Um, the, the foreign vessels, so the vessels who would come in and do charters here, um, theirs have gone up, I believe, 400%. So they have okay. gone from 
uh, $4 per person per day in high season to $16 per person per day, okay. which is a significant, significant. increase. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so whilst it might not impact our local boats as much as it's going to impact the, um, the visiting yachts, they still are a large contributor to our, to our marine economy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there was a, another change that we were talking about that you, you guys are concerned about as far as the definition of a home-based vessel. Right. Um, so there is another legislation which has a definition of a home-based vessel, mm -hmm. and um, it has not been effectively enforced um, because it requires, one of the criteria is that you require being registered here in the BVI. Okay. Registered meaning flagged. Okay. with the BVI flag. And that would be with the shipping registry? or That would be with the shipping registry. Okay. But if you're not British, then you must open up a company, and then the company has to own the boat, and then you can... Then, then be you can, registered. And then you can be registered in the BVI. Okay. So there are a few steps um, before one can actually put the flag up. Okay. So in regards to being a home-based vessel, is this something now that's going to be required of those vessels that may be... Um, based in St. Thomas, or how, how does it affect? No, um, it really just affects the boats that are based here. Okay. And so there are, in the cruising permit ordinance, so the, the, proposed, uh, cri the proposed definition is that a yacht be registered here, mm -hmm. a yacht be home ported here, and a yacht um, have its, one it has have its charters originate here. Um, yes, have okay. its charters originate here. Okay. So, so that's what it was. So is this going to be a positive or a negative impact? Well, it's certainly going to be challenging because I would say that the, 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 a large number of the bear boats mm -hmm. are not registered here. Okay. So they meet the other criteria, mm -hmm. but they are not necessarily registered here. And I would again say that they're, um, most of them are, most of the owners are American. And in all of the bare boat companies, or in the, most of the bare boat companies, they have a program whereby they sell a yacht, okay. and then they put the yacht into their management program. Mm -hmm. The yacht is chartered through that company for five years, for example. And then the, yacht, then the owner has an opportunity to either sell the yacht or take the yacht out and do something else with it, maybe even put it in the crude yacht sector. Okay. And, um, and, and so, you know, buying and selling is all a part of the process. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, you know, if you're going to flag it here, then that process needs to be seamless. So if you're going to buy a boat, you want it to be a seamless process if you're going to be flagging it here as well. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Americans just, they, their, their process of flagging with their flag is online. It's a very simple process and okay. it's not expensive. And um, so we have a challenge with selling, um, selling you know, the BVI flag. Mm -hmm because of the, the, the process, which should be streamlined, we're saying. It needs to be streamlined, it, um, yes. Okay. Yes. And I think um, it's important for us to point out also to our audience in terms of, again, looking at the overall scheme of things and the cost of doing business, where, you know, over again the last two years, we've seen um, new fees being introduced, such as the NHI, or increases in work permit fees, um, hotel accommodation, alcohol, liquor license. So there are definitely overall an increase that is kind of this is adding on top of increases that have already occurred for business operations mm -hmm. so what's some of the concerns that you you've been hearing from um, members of the industry well in 2015 um, st thomas opened the usvi opened up uh, well lifted legislation which restricted the number of paying passengers you could carry on on your vessel. So mm -hmm. it, they used to restrict to six passengers or, or less. Well now, you, now they carry, now you can go into the US and you can carry up to 12 passengers, okay. paying passengers. So that has opened up the option for, for um, new boats coming into the industry to choose between here and, and the USVI depending on, you know, before it was if they carried eight passengers, they needed to be based here. Okay. Well, now they can be based in USVI, and they will have different fees that will be sub subject to. And mm -hmm. and and honestly, they don't. They're not. Um, their fee fees are not even close to what ours are. Okay. Mm -hmm. In terms of higher or lower? Oh, much. Uh, sorry, much lower. <laughs> yes. They, in, in, yes, much much lower. They don't okay. pay any. They don't pay social security. They don't pay. Mm -hmm. 
taxes that mm -hmm. I know of. Okay. Um, and they don't have, uh, they don't have, business licenses requirements like that required here. Right. Okay. So it's it is, it is considerably. Um, less expensive to base mm -hmm. there. Okay. I wanted just to go back to the home-based vessel. One of the challenges with the, that home-based vessel um, being required to register here is that if you, if you are not a home-based vessel, you are restricted, restricted to seven charter pickups in the BVI. Okay. So you cannot be a bare boat mm -hmm. and not be home-based. Okay. As far as the amount of persons don't let you be able to carry? Well, n n you wouldn't you can only do seven charter pickups in the BVI mm -hmm. and, a, and a typical bear boat would go out for 30 weeks a year, 25, 30 weeks a year. Mm -hmm. So if you can only pick up here seven times, you can't really be based oh, here. Oh, okay, in terms of the, not the number of passengers, but the number of charters basically. The number that of you charters that are, okay. are based here. So then yes. this would, would, would basically, I would say force, but then the, the pickups would then have to be originating in the USVI? Is that what would happen? Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. it it really needs to be looked at okay. because 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 we don't want to lose mm -hmm. our, our um, any of of the marine sector and it would impact a large number. Okay, and then I think it's important also for us to point out that if the vessels are based here and they start the charters here, then the provisioning is done here, the fueling is done here, repairs are done here. And all the ancillary services now that support the marine industry are a part of that, you know, those, those economic transactions that we benefit from if we, we are the home base in that regard. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. A lot of money goes into the economy from just running one boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So as far as representation, I know that the, the Charlie Gatt Society has been dialoguing with the premier's office in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's anything you can share or like to share in terms of letting audience know where, where we're standing with those communication. Well, we understand that the, the uh, proposal, proposed amendments have just had their first reading. So we did send a letter to the premier's office and asked if we could have a meeting and discuss the impact. The, the cruising, or not the cruising, but the yachting industry is um, can I say complicated sometimes it just it, it can be difficult to understand mm -hmm. and um, and so we just would like to sit down with uh, you know some of the various departments mm -hmm. um, which will uh, will be able to give their input and will be able to give our input on um, how we see this this legislation if it does go through how we see it impacting okay the industry at large okay especially the negative impact really the negative impact yeah yes. and I from the Chamber of Commerce standpoint this is definitely a concern for us because again we're advocating for you know government regulations that support you know businesses in in their their endeavors so if we have complicated processes in terms of how we do business as well as it's being more costly than our neighbors in terms of the USVI, you know, we, we could very well see a shift in right. where businesses choose to be based because now they do have a choice. Right. Um, and, and we have to take that into consideration of everything that's done in that regard. In, it was interesting, but in 1995, that was really when the crude yacht sector here in the BVI mm -hmm. started to grow significantly and that was the same year that the um that the usvi imposed the six we call it the six-pack regulation but okay. they regulated the number of passengers you could pick up mm -hmm. and i think too um this in terms of industry um a person may not think of it that it is affected in terms of destination access so whether it's by air or sea that may determine where a passenger decides to actually start their charter whether they want to be picked up in the USVI or they, they travel over to the BVI and then start their charter. Um, absolutely correct. So we're connecting the dots because we it, are, like yes. you're saying, it, it's a very complex issue Yes. Um, in regards to, you know, this is part of our tourism sector yes. that we talk about. That's, you know, one of the, the main pillars in our economy. Mm -hmm. So that's a very key um, 
point I think that we need to highlight to make sure that you know persons again are not discuss discussing changes in isolation of you know the larger picture and making sure that all the dots are connected in regards to you know how how everything plays out in right. the end absolutely okay yes um, anything else you'd like to share as it relates to the marine industry how, how are things doing in terms of growth um, I think you know it is it is a very resilient industry mm -hmm. and um, and so I it, the the bareboat sector I continues to do well mm -hmm. and um, and the crude yachts tend to um, have their ups and downs but okay. they do tend to be resilient and mm -hmm. and um, and so I think overall the industry is is doing well. Okay. But I think we have to be careful. Okay. I think we have to be this careful a, about a pivot, a, one of those pivoting points. If we're not absolutely on point with the plan. Yes. Okay. Yes. I think we have to be careful about digging too deep into the pockets because yeah. because the owners of the vessels are running. They they own a business mm -hmm. and they you know they don't want to be um, losing yeah. all the time. And I, I think too, it's important. We were talking about this on the break that even when you look at the cost of doing business, um, some persons may feel, well, we can just pass it on to the consumer. But again, it's a very competitive market. So if our charters become more expensive than the competition, then that very well can have a negative impact on us because then it's like saying we don't have control over um, necessarily when the government raises the fees. But what we are saying is that consideration be taken in terms of how it's, it's whether it's a gradual increase because it's, it's such a jump yes um, because revisions aren't done on a regular basis and I think that's one of the key things that for me seeing what's been happening over the last two years that you know we need to make it a, a policy that legislations are reviewed every 10 years or so so that the impact in terms of cost or the cost implications to change in legislation is not so grievous when it comes to you know all these things are happening back to back and right. and it's it's either we're making money in terms of our revenue is increasing to be able to match the expenses plus profit or we're going to be operating at a loss and could possibly go out of business that's right yeah yes. well quite a bit going on there janet you seem yes. to have your hands full <laughs> if persons want to get in contact with you for more information how, how would they do that sure um, well, they could call our um, uh, call our number at uh, four nine four six zero one seven, mm -hmm. and they could speak to me. Uh, they could go to our website uh, bvicrudeyachts.com. Mm -hmm. uh, they could stop by my office. I'm located just behind Village Key. Okay, and that's in the Columbus Center. The Columbus Center, yes. All right. Awesome. Well, Janet, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it. You've been tuned in to Chamber Talk. I'm your host, Shana Smith, Vice President of Business at the BDI Chamber of Commerce and Hotel Association. And we'll take a commercial break and be right back. <laughs>